there's just so much that can come out of each call that makes me feel like there are changes we can make within our operation that are going to be beneficial, that I feel excited after each one because of the ideas that are being shared, and then the willingness of all of your experts to give out their information and say, hey, if you're stuck on something or if you have a question about this later when you're thinking about it, you can't pay for that kind of information. You know, that's amazing to be able to reach out to those people. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I am your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, where we connect you with beef industry experts and leaders to improve your own operation. Speaking of improving operations, I'd like to personally invite you to attend my monthly Rancher Mind events. Rancher Mind events are Q&A calls between cattle producers and industry experts that allow you as the cattle producer to enter a community of people who support and push you to find those improvements and connect with experts who can answer your questions and guide you in the right direction. You can find out more about these events and how to sign up by heading over to my website, casualcattleconversations.com. And while you're there, if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you 22 ranch management tips for free that have been shared by the gurus who have been on my show before. Remember, the best way to support podcasts is to share, rate, and review the show so that I know what episodes and content you like and want more of. With that, let's connect you with this week's guest and expert. All right, Jen. Well, I am, I have been very excited for this actually one, because I'm excited to talk about your experience as a Rancher Mind member and share your story a little more than I have before. I know you were featured on my blog a while ago, but also just because you've been following along the podcast for a while and we've been social media friends for gosh, at least a year, if not more. And it's nice to actually visit over Zoom. So thanks for hopping on today. Absolutely. It's great to see you. So let's just kind of hop right into the topic and we'll talk a little bit about what you guys do as an operation in between there. But for those listening today, we're going to talk about continuous education and learning in the beef industry, because that is something that a lot of other industries do. And it is equally as important that we as beef producers continuously learn and network and connect as well. So Jen, I really want to hear why do you think continuous education in the beef industry is important? Why is that important to you? Well, so I come at this with the background of an educator. I was a teacher for a while. So, you know, obviously any plugs for education, I'm going to be right in. But I think especially in agriculture in general, we tend to do things the way that our dad did or the way that granddad did, because, you know, it's worked for 20 years, it's worked for 50 years, but that doesn't always mean it's the most efficient or the most profitable way to get things done. Our industry is constantly changing. It definitely looks different the way that we interact with the markets, the way we market our animals themselves, our consumer base is so different than it was when I was a kid, you know, certainly than when my grandpa was doing it. And so we have to be educating ourselves both about the markets and the way those are changing and our consumers and best practices. And you can't do that if you just kind of stick your head down and say, I don't need to learn anything else. You know, this has always worked this way. Well, you're absolutely correct there. And, you know, what's the saying, the three most or the couple most deadly words or the most deadly phrases. Well, this is how we've always done it. Um, so I forgot you were a teacher previously. So how, how would you say that has impacted your outlook on continuous learning compared to what you see with others? How does that impact how you operate? Well, I think, you know, when I was teaching, like so many other professions out there, you're required to get college credits to re-up your license every few years. So it was something that I had always just kind of assumed was standard, you know, and when I left education entirely, 
it was real easy to just redirect that energy somewhere else. Okay. Well, I'm used to coming home in the evening and having to put in some extra effort on learning something about what I'm doing. Well, now let's just apply that to our ranching operation. So are you full-time on the ranch with your husband then? Yes. I I caved to our local school district and sub from time to time when I'm feeling crazy, (laughs) just to remind me that I don't want to go back. It's great for that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm sure they appreciate you uh, subbing in there. So how about you talk a little bit about your ranch itself and where you're located so that people get an idea of who you are and what you and Logan do? Yeah. So um, we are HI slash cattle company. We were formerly the Cripple Cowboy Cow Outfit, but we relocated and rebranded about a year ago. Uh, We are in the heart of the Sand Hills in Stapleton, which is just a little north of North Platte. Um, We run a commercial cow calf operation and we, oh, my husband's a fifth generation that's been doing that. And then he and I also ventured out into the seed stock business and are running registered Angus and Black Hereford cattle out here as well. And we originally came from Northwest Colorado, kind of extreme Northwest, ran into the Utah side a little bit and kind of had enough of the federal lands and, and being on BLM. And last winter, we packed up all the cows and three generations of people and six generations of junk. And here we are. <laughs> So, that, I mean, that is a really neat story. I mean, a lot of people could have just stayed because that's where their legacy was. That's where they've always been. But that was huge for you guys to make that change. So talk about how you use continuous education on your ranch today. Like, how have you been applying what you've been learning and say the Rancher Mind program or other programs that you're in to your operation? Well, I think the move in some ways was a great opportunity to shake up and force us to delve back into it. You know, all of a sudden we don't know everything generationally because we're in a new place. Uh, farming was all new to us. So putting up hay and all that, there's definitely a lot of new education, not so much continuous, but new education that came with that. But also it was a great opportunity to look at, are we doing things just because that's how we do them? Or is there a better way? And so some of the Rancher Mind opportunities that we've had have been really impactful. We didn't have a great way to background calves before where we were at. And now we we are set up in a way that we can do that much better. So, you know, I got a ton out of that. How can we apply that to our new operation? And just digging into a lot of those opportunities that, you know, and we probably would have had some before, but we weren't thinking about it in that way. And so Rancher Minds has really helped us to take a step back and, and look at, are there opportunities we're missing? Are we really being very deliberate and intentional about all the choices we make, you know, when you had Shaylee on and she talked about markets, it made me think about cold cows. You know, it was just a little mm-hmm. comment she said about cold cows, but boy, I've got a whole different plan this year. You know, it, it really helps. You know, and that's, so for those who are listening and not familiar with the Rancher Mind program, they're producer driven conversations where two, anywhere from one to three experts join the converse, join the call and then Ranchers have the opportunity to, well, I have ranchers. I've even had like ag lenders join calls before just so they can learn about the industry better and learn about their customer base and their challenges better. But they're able to attend the calls and ask these experts anything on a topic. It's not necessarily webinar style where there are PowerPoint slides and you're just listening to people. It's very question-based, producer-driven questions. Um, And so that's what that looks like. But Jen, back to your point about Shaylee's comment about the coal cows, sometimes it is just the simple things that we miss because, I mean, let's face it, as cattle producers, we're jacks and jills of all trades and have a lot going on. So sometimes the simple things can get overlooked. So it's just nice to hear from other people. Yeah, well, and, you know, it's just kind of that rote memory, muscle memory, you know, we Wean the calves, we preg check, anything open goes, the end. Well, maybe there's better market opportunities out there than that. And just a little reminder goes a long way. And hopefully it'll go a long way in my pocketbook later. (laughs) Well, that's the goal would be to help people be a little more 
profitable on their operations and, you know, maybe get a few more cattle producers to shift their mindset and take a vacation when they can, because their operation is in a better place financially. (laughs) Well, and we have to, there's no way to compete in the markets we're in right now, if we aren't ready to jump those hurdles, because there's always going to be new challenges that are thrown out for us. You have to be constantly learning. If you're going to play on that game, you just have to. Well, and that's just it. And I think, you know, all other business owners are doing that. I mean, think about cattle producers, like in a normal entrepreneurial world, because that's what a lot of us are, the business owners, a lot of people you hear, you know, there are more people that I'm hearing have started their own operations from scratch than maybe what you like think. There are a lot of family operations too, but as business owners, that is something that is necessary. So how did you find out about the Rancher Mind calls? I don't think I've ever asked you that before. Was it I'm sure it was just social media and your podcast, but I don't actually remember if you have even mentioned it on the podcast, if that was how, or if it was just social media, it was probably just Facebook. I got lucky. (laughs) Algorithm (laughs) worked for me. Well, that's good. I'm glad. And so with that, what, what would you say has been like your favorite part about the calls, whether that's format. I know you talked about how backgrounding the backgrounding call was one of your top calls and your favorite calls, but what is that? What has been your favorite part of attending these events? So I love that it is so question oriented, you know, it's very comfortable. It doesn't feel like when you're in college and you're sitting in AN 101 and, you know, it's a little uncomfortable to ask questions because it's a huge group and it's much more, and it feels cheesy to say it is a casual conversation, (laughs) but really it is. And, you know, even when you've got presenters on there that have slides and things that they're running through, it still is absolutely acceptable to ask a bunch of questions and it's just chill. You know, it's a great way to get information. I was actually a little bit nervous when you had Shaley Stewart on to talk about markets because that's, you know, been a rough conversation for a while. And I got off of that and felt optimistic, which I didn't know was possible when talking about the cattle market right now, you know, but I did. And there's just so much that can come out of each call that makes me feel like there are changes we can make within our operation that are going to be beneficial, that I feel excited after each one because of the ideas that are being shared. And then the willingness of all of your experts to give out their information and say, Hey, if you're stuck on something, or if you have a question about this later, when you're thinking about it, you can't pay for that kind of information. You know, that's amazing to be able to reach out to those people. They have been fantastic about that. But I think that's one of the beautiful things about the beef industry. I mean, as I'm the fifth generation on my family's ranch and working on that and trying to, you know, learn myself. And as I build up this business and podcast, it's something where people in the beef industry are very willing to help, which I think we take for granted a lot of times. Yeah, absolutely. Hey folks, it's Shay here, and I want to personally invite you as my listener to take the next steps in improving the profitability of your operation by signing up for my 2023 Rancher Mind series. The Rancher Mind program consists of producer-driven monthly calls that cover topics such as developing a reproduction program, labor challenges, cattle marketing, business development, and goal setting. I bring on industry experts each month to answer your specific questions. I also provide extra resources and a place for you to keep networking and moving forward without requiring you to leave the ranch. For more information, head over to my website, casualcattleconversations.com, and select the Rancher Mind event tab. Let's keep moving individual operations and our industry forward. So, you have a podcast the Black Hereford Chronicles. Yeah. How has that played into, has that played into your learning experiences too, as far as you continuing to grow or how is that? Absolutely. So, um, you know, it was just kind of a way the Black Hereford breeder group is a small, but mighty group. 
Uh, you know, it's still a relatively new breed and it's quickly growing, but I felt like there were a lot of breeders in that breed that are pretty new to the business, new to seed stock. A lot of them are new to cattle in general. And there were a lot of questions getting asked that I thought, you know, I, I can help pass on some of that continuing education and I can reach these people. A lot of them aren't as in touch with the ag community as some of the rest of us that are generational have been. And so they're, they're missing some of that information. And then it's also forced me to dig deeper into information that I hadn't put a whole lot of thought into. Um, The Black Hereford breed is redoing their EPDs right now. They're switching to IGS. And I have had to do a lot of deep dives into what's really behind those numbers. You know, I, I never had to care before. I knew how to read the chart and that was good enough. But to really force myself to learn how those are created so that I can pass that information on better has really made me smarter about what we're doing. Well, that's awesome to hear. So you made a comment earlier about how, you know, your move forced you to kind of have to get back into learning mode. What's something that you think like you could do to get yourself back into learning mode and say, like, if you got comfortable, because as humans, it's easy to get comfortable. So what tips would you have for other producers to try and get back into a learning mode and kind of stay there? I think starting with podcasts is a great way to figure out what maybe is going to tickle your interest. You've just got to find one thing. If you're working calves, you know, a lot of us are weaning right now or just finished weaning, getting ready to ship. If you're any little thought that pops in your mind while you're out there, oh, I wonder why this is the way it is. I wonder if we did this. Don't just let that go. Go home and dig into it because it just takes one little spark and then that keeps growing. I also, right after we moved, we were exhausted (laughs) mentally and physically. And so I saw myself kind of letting things slide and I made a calendar for myself that was, I am going to do these things every day. And one of them was read an industry article. And that was, and it's, you know, cheesy. I'm giving myself a check mark. It's not like I'm getting a sticker or a gold star, Mm -hmm. but just knowing that I had set that goal and then making sure I followed through on that, it really helps. And all you've got to do is find that one little thing that interests you and then dig into it. Find your passion project. I I really appreciate that. And it is something where it's easy to say we don't have time, but, you know, reading an industry article, there are so many great publications out there with free newsletters, free whatever, that it only takes five to 10 minutes, depending on the article and to get your brain going for the day. Even it's a way better you- way to have your coffee in the morning than watching the news. Yeah. And I, I like listening to podcasts in the morning too, because one, it gets my brain going and yeah, the news is pretty pessimistic. So (laughs) on all that time that you're spending in the truck feeding or in the tractor, you know, all the time that I'm doing laundry or dishes, all of that's great time to put on a podcast. Yes. Winter is here. We just got like, well, between 15 and 18 inches of snow. So rub it in. Full feeding mode is here for us in the north. <laughs> so there's a lot of tractor time there. <laughs> well, Jen, do you have anything else you really want to share about, you know, continuous learning as a rancher or about the Rancher Mind program or anything you just want to share with my audience? I would just encourage people to try it out. You know, get on there, find a topic that's going to interest you and give it a shot. Uh, One of my favorite things about the program that I forgot to mention is that you do record them. We all get really busy, especially in the summer, you know, when it was light out until nine o'clock, I've got two kids. So if you miss one of those calls, you can go back and listen to it later. And then what's been really great about that is I'm able to then force my husband to sit down and listen to some of those later too because we're both getting different things out of it that are really important. So it's not a one-shot thing. You can go back and re-listen. You can catch up if you missed it. There, It's an opportunity that you're not going to find anywhere else. So just give it a try. Well, yes, there, I forgot the recordings too, but yes, I record all the calls 
and anyone who registers for the call gets the recording because I understand that it's hard to be inside. If I wasn't the one running the calls, I would be missing some calls too. <laughs> so, well, thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate your perspective and story. You've uh, certainly been pretty busy and made a lot of changes and growth in the past year. <laughs> thank you. Hey folks, if you are interested in finding a way to increase the profitability of your calves and hit that profit goal you have set, take a listen to this message from our friends at the Red Angus Association. As input costs soar, beef producers are eyeing value-added programs to help reach their profitability goals. The Red Angus Feeder Calf Certification Program, the most mature value-added program in the beef industry, is expanding and helping more producers earn premiums on their calves. The FCCP combines three important components into a single value-added program, genetics, source, and age verification. Cattle producers recognize the value of the yellow FCCP tag and continue to see market-topping premiums for a minimal investment by enrolling their Red Angus sired calves. And for those producers who seek age and source verification but are lacking the Red Angus sired component, be sure to check out the Allied Access Program, which is eligible to age and source verify every calf born in the United States, regardless of breed. For more information on Red Angus value-added programs and the FCCP, please go to redangus.org and start opening new doors to marketing avenues and maximizing your return on investment. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.